Gallup.com reports Americans believe that government is too powerful at record level. Six in ten Americans believe the federal government has too much power, one percentage point above the previous high recorded in September 2010. At least half of Americans since 2005 have said the government has too much power. 32% now say the government has the right amount of power. Few say it has too little power. Seventh graders suspended for nine months for playing with a toy gun at home. Last week, in the wake of the Navy Yard shooting in D.C., we predicted that another wave of knee-jerk overreactions to anyone doing anything with any object remotely looking like a gun would occur. Sadly, we were right. The latest incident occurred in Virginia, where a seventh grader and his friend had been suspended from school for playing with a toy gun in the boy's own front yard outside of school hours. So you go watch the video. Basically, they're shooting a plastic pellet gun on their own front yard against a cartoon paper target, these two 13-year-old boys. Some busybody calls the police, says that there's somebody shooting a gun. They come out. The principal suspends both kids for nine months and recommends that they, quote, be expelled for a year for possession, handling, and use of a firearm. So this kid's whole education could be completely ruined over the fact that he was shooting a plastic pellet gun in his own front yard outside of school hours. And again, it's all part of the pussification of America. You've got psychologically damaged people in positions of power like this principle. Then you've got the moron public wannabes who seek out that petty power, like the one who called the cops over this kid who was playing with a toy gun. So the kids should be given an apology, put back in school. The principal should be fired for manifestly proving that he's incapable of exercising logic which is a pretty big deal for somebody working in the, in the education system. And the stupid woman who called the cops over a kid playing with a toy gun should be fined for wasting police time. But again, how many more ridiculous stories do we have to hear like this? We hear them almost every week before common sense makes an appearance. State of Connecticut refuses to release Adam Lanza's medical records. The state of Connecticut is refusing to release Sandy Hook gunman Adam Lanza's medical records over fears that divulging the identity of the antidepressants he was taking would, quote, cause a lot of people to stop taking their medications, according to Assistant Attorney General Patrick B. Quanache. You can go and watch the clip on the website. So we've known basically for nine months that Adam Lanza was on some form of prescription medication. It said that in the search warrant for his house. The parents group Able Child has basically been behind this effort to try and find out exactly the identity of what those drugs were. And they've been rebuffed at every level and attempt by the state. Because this is important to find out, because as we've documented, virtually every mass shooter in the last three decades has been on some form of psychiatric drug. And in fact, we've got the link here in the article, ssristories.com, which lists literally hundreds of examples. So the state admits they don't want to divulge the identity of the drug Lanza was taking because it might stop, it might cause others to stop taking it. And, you know, how is that a bad thing? It's a public safety issue, yet they're trying to block the release of this information at every turn. And, of course, the media isn't interested in it because they get $2.4 billion of pharmaceutical company advertising every year, which is why they habitually choose to obsess about gun control and not psychiatric drugs in the case of mass shooters. An off-duty soldier armed with handguns saves 100 lives during mall siege. Here's a positive story about guns that you're not likely to see the U.S. corporate media pay much attention to. An off-duty SAS soldier armed with just a handgun saved 100 lives during the terrorist siege on the Westgate shopping mall in Kenya. So he basically went in with a handgun, kept going in and out a dozen times, saved 100 hostages. But again, the media won't cover it. They will, they will shy away from it because they dare not highlight examples of guns being used for positive defensive purposes, despite a 1993 National Defense Survey, which found that Americans use guns to defend themselves in a confrontation with criminals some 2.5 million times a year. And again, the media obsession with refusing to highlight this fact of guns being used defensively contributes to the erroneous perception that violent gun crime is increasing when, in fact, according to the Justice Department's own figures, gun homicides are down 49% since 1993. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?